For the last 30 days, I did a challenge. Well, I wouldn't really say a challenge, but more of an experiment. Because for the last 30 days, I decided to limit myself to only playing my Nintendo 3DS. Which means, no modern gaming, like nothing else. It was, it was the only thing I played. I don't know, I don't know. It sounded fun, so I tried something different. And it just so happens I documented the whole thing. But why the 3DS? Well, for starters, this little device was not only chock full of nostalgic memories, but also dust and cobwebs. I don't remember the last time I intentionally sat down and played this thing, so a lot of it was for reliving that childhood experience. But another plus that swayed my decision was its form factor being a smaller, strictly portable device. This was during a busy time in my life, lots of traveling and whatnot, and so to truly thrive through this experiment, portability was sort of a must. I also wanted this experience to be as authentic as possible, so I decided to make a ground rule for myself. I only allowed games that I personally owned, so 3DS hacking was a no-go. I do, however, have a region-hacked 3DS, but again, I was only utilizing it to play cartridges that I physically owned. The concept of intentionally limiting myself to one game console for a longer period of time always fascinated me, like it intrigued me, and so when I thought of the idea to try it out with the 3DS of all things, I couldn't help but feel excited. Like, I remember the system pretty fondly, so I was confident I could keep myself busy for a while. However, I wasn't really sure how long that confidence would last, but I guess you'll have to wait and find out. I scheduled a start date on February 8th, and I exclusively played my Nintendo 3DS for the next 30 days. This is how it went. Okay, it's day one of the experiment, and I already ran into my first hiccup. What do I play first? My 3DS library isn't jaw-dropping by any means, but it also ain't too shabby either. I got a decent amount of variety. I, I'm not the biggest Pokemon guy, so these were out of the equation. And who can forget Rayman 3D and Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer? I give up. No, but seriously, it honestly didn't take me too long to figure out what to play. After being retired from this thing for so long, I wanted to ease my way back into the 3DS experience, and I thought, what better way to do that than to play the handheld's bread and butter, a platformer, of course. But not just any platformer, I'm talking about the highly respected Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D. Donkey Kong Country Returns. Now, I remember playing the original version on the Wii, and at first glance, you may be thinking, that's you playing a platformer? <laughs> and I can assure you, I am playing a platformer. Yeah, the Wii version is often criticized for its oversaturation of motion controls. However, the 3DS release takes those elements out of the equation and simplifies the game's control scheme. And it isn't like the original game was bad, far from that. But this one change alone makes this great game all the more better. I won't gush over this title for too long, but man, this was a perfect way to start off the month. This game was practically made to be on 3DS with its foreground and background level design. Each level is sprawling with originality and creativity, which leads to fun gimmicks that ultimately lead to absurd scenarios at times. A good amount of these levels have a lot of variety that I looked forward to every time I played. It's fresh, it's slick, it's fun. It keeps you on your toes for sure. The first couple days, I, I didn't have much time to play, so I found myself ending my days with some late night Donkey Kong. I will say though, whenever I would pop this baby on and play, uh, it was kind of hard to put down. So that's what I did for the next few days. I played it whenever I had time. Eventually the Super Bowl happened, I guess. Most people thought I was cheering for football, but no, I beat a minecart level in Donkey Kong. Now, one thing I did notice when playing this is that I completely forgot how the circle pad feels. It's crazy how fast you can get accustomed to modern controllers like the Switch Pro controller, for example. And like I said, I really don't remember the last time I sat down and played a 3DS for more than an hour. Especially when playing a precise platformer like Donkey Kong, the circle pad felt more stiffer than I remember. It wasn't game breaking, it was just something I noticed after being on a 3DS hiatus for so long. I eventually beat Donkey Kong. I thought it was a really fun game all around and a perfect introduction to the month. But as for my next order of business, I decided to fix my eyes on a whole different genre. I think playing platformers the entire time would get pretty old fast and seeing what I could tackle next, I thought maybe no, 
No. No. Oh my gosh. Paper Mario Sticker Star. Uh, I remember playing this when- Objection! I'm kidding. I needed a change of pace, and luckily for me, my 3DS offers something that's pace-changing on multiple levels. Gameplay, intellectually, emotionally. It was time for me to dive back into the world of Phoenix Wright. Yes, this thing is called a 3DS, but I also call it my Phoenix Wright machine. I mean, look at this! I fell in love with Phoenix Wright back in the day. I bought the HD trilogy on the eShop store, rest in peace, and I did not fully understand what I was getting myself into. A tremendous cast of characters? Intense crime cases? Bone-chilling courtroom moments? Music that willingly make me pull out my crusty old earbuds just to listen to? A simple summary of the gameplay loop is you play as Phoenix Wright, a defense attorney investigating crimes, mainly murder cases, and defending not guilty verdicts for clients. Uh, you're a lawyer. It's a visual novel themed around the courtroom with a fantastic and vast cast of characters and an amazingly woven story. Now, I've said this before, I'm not the biggest story-driven person. I rely on gameplay heavily in most cases, and while gameplay-wise, investigating and gathering evidence slash information can drag on for me at times, it's when you step into the courtroom where tension and satisfaction escalate dramatically. Each case, you're tested with your recollection as you have to solve and point out contradictions to testimonies using witnesses' stories and evidence gathered during your investigations. It is a series that balances both very intense themes, but also doesn't take itself too seriously. I mean, the legal system, characters, and scenarios you have to face are pretty ridiculous at times, but the payoff for continually prying open each and every case, every testimony, every lie, is legitimately unmatched. Like, the writing and story and case design is seriously that good. It's a series filled with goosebump reactions and satisfaction, music that's insanely catchy but also intensifies the game tenfold, and presents cases that are dramatic, extreme, funny, and sometimes even emotional. I've only played the first game! Okay, I lied. I have played the second game up until the final case. I, I don't know why I stopped, I just did, but that was my goal for the next few days, finally completing the second game in this series. And I just want to say, like, what terrible timing to stop playing. The second game, Justice For All, has been considered by many to be the weakest game in the first trilogy, and while I do agree it's weak in a few areas, the final case in this game completely carries and warrants this game's existence. And I just casually decided to stop playing before the finale, you know, no, no biggie. These games perfectly fit the 3DS form factor. With the dual screen setup, it just makes things so smooth not having to navigate through multiple menus to present evidence or whatever. It's such a minor advantage to the 3DS having a separate touch screen, but I've always preferred it over the console ports. Coming back to this franchise felt like I never left. It reminds me of playing through cases while traveling, being sucked into its world and characters, and case four, man, again, what a case! So much tension, twists, emotions, just look at how thrilled I am! I promise I'm enjoying myself. By this point, it was day 14. After finally completing the emotional roller coaster that was Case 4, I actually went on to play the first case in the third game, but I really didn't want to spend my full 30 days with this franchise, so I moved on to my next project. Surprisingly, a Nintendo Direct happened today. I anxiously waited for any 3DS announcements. I was severely disappointed. Ah, oh well, that just gives me an excuse to move on to one of my most anticipated 3DS games, for this challenge. Metroid 2 Samus Returns. This is the only mainline Metroid I haven't played to completion. I remember doing a marathon before Metroid Dread came out on Switch, and yeah, I, I skipped this one. I didn't own this version at the time, and god forbid I play this ancient relic. Can you blame me? But I've been wanting to dive into this one for a while, so I was actually pretty excited. So for the next few days, I began my Metroid 2 journey. My excitement, however, slowly waned during this game's beginning. 
I, I just wasn't feeling it. I don't know if I wasn't in the Metroidvania mode, or maybe this experiment in general was getting old for me. Luckily, it didn't last too long. I think there were multiple reasons for this. Firstly, the start of the game was a little on the slower side. Also, I couldn't get a firm grasp on the game's controls. Coming from Metroid Dread, a game that has movement so fluid it could glide through a screen door, Metroid 2 took some getting used to. It doesn't feel terrible, it's just different. I would say it's more snappier than smooth in some cases. Like for example, the combat gets to be pretty static and less fluid because of the countering system. It can feel kinda choppy using that. And with the form factor of the 3DS, platforming combined with combat can feel a bit cluttered with its controls. I do commend them that they utilized every button the 3DS has to offer, but by doing this, things can feel pretty tight. Another example, on day 17, I took a road trip with my brother. I brought my 3DS, a non-XL, and played some Metroid. But after playing for a while, my hands felt cramped from the intense platforming and fighting. I do recommend that if you ever decide to play this game, uh, try your best to play on an XL if you have average size hands. You'll be doing your joints a favor. So yeah, I didn't make that same mistake twice. Uh, most of my sessions from then on involved the 3DS XL. I think it was also frustrating because this game is honestly pretty challenging. One thing Metroid 2 does a good job at is teaching you to master this game's movement and mechanics, cause man, I actually died a few times during the early parts of learning the game. If you don't know the structure of Metroid 2, your mission is to hunt down and exterminate all Metroids. So you'll be facing a lot of bosses slash mini bosses throughout your playthrough, and when you're still warming up to the game's controls, that can get kind of difficult as well as annoying. And before you say skill issue, this was during the first hour or so of the game. It got a lot better once I finally started getting used to the overall feel of it. It just took some time to get fully invested. But that's just it. Like, at this point in the month, thinking about getting fully invested into another single-player experience again wasn't the most appealing. You know, I could relate to Samus, all alone on this planet, not seeing any life forms. It kind of reminds me of myself in this experiment. Most of my play sessions up until this point had just been me, my bed, and my 3DS, and I just want to be clear and say that I have nothing wrong with this. In fact, that's when I usually find myself gaming. But doing an experiment like this that forces you out of the mainstream media feels almost more isolating. I kind of found myself at a stalemate. I wasn't gaining the satisfaction of single player content. And basically, I was just craving a multiplayer experience. And it got me thinking, what would be the best way of going about this problem? And it was at that moment when I was reminded of one of the best features the DS family ever created. Three words for you. DS download play. I, I don't think DS is a word. The DS and 3DS had an ingenious feature for local portable multiplayer. There were multiple factors to consider during the DS era. One was obviously the lack of internet connection everywhere you went. There needed to be a way to connect these devices together without Wi-Fi. Another thing was not everyone would own the same games and to coordinate with your friends on which games to buy was just too much hassle. There needed to be a way to have the convenience of playing local multiplayer wherever whenever and with whoever. And thus, DS Download Play was born. I honestly couldn't give you an educated answer on how this all works, but basically, multiple DSs can connect to each other and transmit game data wirelessly. There would be one host with a compatible game, and all the other players would connect to this host and download the necessary files to play, even if they didn't own the original game. And this opened the door to way more opportunities for multiplayer. Now, I will say this, the content available varied with each game. Some were very limited, only allowing minigames and such. Others required each player owning the game to have a better experience, but at the end of the day, it didn't matter. I was a kid playing Luigi's Poker with family, and I was okay with that. However, there was one game that exceeded every other DS game's download play. It was, quite honestly, the perfect game for the feature. It was time to pop in and visit an old classic. Mario Party DS. I don't think I need to explain Mario Party. It's prime time board game chaos and Mario Party DS is no different. Is what I would say, except for the fact that it has a full on single player campaign with multiple bosses.
Bruh. My favorite thing about this entry is the developers understood the importance of Mario Party multiplayer. The DS download play function isn't really limited at all. It allows pretty much the entire game to be accessed by other players even if they don't own a copy, which I feel was so key for this game to excel. And it really did for me and my family. I remember playing this with my siblings on road trips, whether it was the typical board game action, the weird puzzle modes, or even just free playing minigames. It was by far the best valued multiplayer game on the DS. And so with all that being said, I had the game, I, I just needed to find three people as crazy as me that would pull out their dusty DS's in the current age. I started planning for a day to do it, and on day 18, I rounded up some friends and family to play Mario Party on the DS. Man, I enjoyed this a lot. I was ready for a change of pace in terms of gaming interaction. It was such a nostalgic experience and just as chaotic as ever. Looking back, the game is unbalanced in some regards and the boards are pretty tiny, but I was not deeply analyzing this game. I was just there to have a good time. And you may be thinking, you drug these poor souls into your little experiment. What, so you could selfishly hog their time for content? Like, why would you- Because I was lonely. It was such a fun time playing this again. It had probably been close to a decade since playing this last, so you can kind of get an idea of just how nostalgic this session was. Seriously, shout outs to these guys. They didn't have to do this, uh, but it was fun and we had a good time. After that Mario Party hangout, I kind of took a break, honestly. The next few days, I wanted to focus on a big video project of mine, so I got on the editing grind and I didn't have time to play really at all. But by day 24, I was finally ready to dive fully back in to Metroid 2. Now, this is when I truly started to get back into the groove of things. I finally committed, learning the game and getting into the Metroid mood once again, and after getting over the starting hump, the game actually started to feel pretty good. Like mentioned earlier, it's snappier, but I think that plays into its strengths, especially during some of the later boss fights. It's also so nice having a map on the bottom screen. Oh my gosh, other Metroidvanias can kind of get irritating with the amount of times you have to stop and open up the map menus and blah, 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 blah. But with the dual screen function of the 3DS, dude, this just makes things so much more streamlined. I just wish it was a little more helpful. And when I say this, I mean, this Metroid feels very linear, almost too linear. I know Metroid's latest entries have sort of fell into the hand holdy design. I prefer the gameplay loop of Super Metroid, scouring planet Zebes with an intense emphasis on exploration. I just found it so satisfying finding upgrades and remembering places that utilize my new tools to then backtrack and discover substantial areas that progressed me forward. I understand this isn't for everyone. This design kind of encourages to get lost in its world, and so having a straightforward progression is not bad by any means. I just prefer the former. Metroid 2 sections off each area by having a certain quota of Metroids you have to destroy in order to progress. So. It kind of limits the options on where to explore or where Metroids can be. Every section basically acts like a quote unquote level and you can only progress within the parameters of said level. Backtracking isn't really essential here. I also felt like the bosses and especially the enemies got really repetitive as the game went on. There was not much variety in the enemy department. Most of them were just different variations of each other. The bosses were more tolerable though. It was pretty satisfying checking them off the list as you progress. And I, I mean, I really like the whole concept of bounty hunting Metroids. I just kind of wish that there was just a little more to the exploring aspect, but again, I understand that's personal preference. But overall, I still enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun game all around. It, it got pretty challenging near the end, definitely one of the more fulfilling Metroids I've played. But despite some of its flaws, I still had a good time. Glad I could check this one off the Metroid list. By this time, it was day 28. The break plus finishing up Metroid took a decent chunk out of the month, and so I had two final days left of this experiment. Every game I started, I tried my best to finish, and so with these last two days, I couldn't really find a game in my library that I thought I had enough time to complete. And so to finish out the month, I decided to go the route of playing something that's a little more timeless. Mario Kart 7, out of 10, this game is pretty decent. 
talk about nostalgia, I believe this was my first game for the 3DS system. So for me, this was a fitting conclusion as well as the true moment of reliving that childhood. Day 29, I hopped into some standard races to get a feel for the game again. This entry isn't really bad, it's just sort of lacking. I mean, the box art says it all, but there's not much here. Something that was interesting is I stumbled upon the first person mode. I remember messing around with this thing as a kid. I thought it was always interesting to see Mario Kart from this POV. It was definitely challenging, that's for sure, especially on something like Rainbow Road. It also gets pretty trippy using the gyro controls combined with this view. Turn up the 3D slider and you have a recipe for a serious case of nausea at its worst. That's pretty much what I only did that day, uh, going through tracks I haven't played in years. But alas, it was the final day of this journey. If I'm being honest, I was ready to get back to the norm. Uh, I had some other games I wanted to play, but I wanted to finish this strong. So I continued that day with more Mario Kart 7, trying to beat all the other cups I didn't get to. But man, playing with these CPUs again just felt bleh. It just kind of felt numb, like I was going through the motions or counting down the minutes. I eventually found my way back to the starting menu, and as I sat there, I totally forgot that Mario Kart 7 offered online multiplayer. So I said, you know what, what the heck, I'll, I'll try this out. Uh, no way. I was kind of shocked, honestly, I completely forgot the servers hadn't shut down yet. And so surprisingly, I found myself playing Mario Kart 7 online. It was actually pretty wholesome, the fact that there were other people out there still playing their 3DSs online. Literally, I joined the same group of five people in Worldwide Races the entire time. Like, the thought that we could possibly be the only ones playing the original Mario Kart 7 at this time was hilarious to me. It was seriously such a nice cherry on top of the whole month. But more importantly, it showed me that people still cared about the 3DS. I don't think I'm alone when I say a lot of people have a firm attachment to this device. And after playing it for a whole month straight, I was reminded why that is. This is an incredibly polished portable through and through. It's so slick and easy to pop open and play this thing whenever. But hardware isn't the only plus. The 3DS, while having a slow launch, gradually gained a really great library of games and offered a lot of quality digital titles on the eShop as well. Like I said, I remember this system fondly. But after limiting myself to only the 3DS for these last 30 days, I regained an appreciation for this thing again. It was more fun coming back to this than I actually thought, and to cap off my 3DS experience with other 3DS users online was quite literally the perfect send-off. So that was my 3DS for 30 days. It was fun. It was really fun. Um, was it life-changing? No, but at the very least, I hope I inspired someone to pick up their old 3DS and fire it back on again. I don't know. Um, I do recommend trying something like this, though. It, it was pretty enjoyable, and it doesn't even have to be the 3DS. And while I would have loved to dive into some more 3DS games, I'm just glad I chose not to suffer.